welcome to Strength Based Marketing. I'm Pat Dewar. My guest today is a uh, CSP. <laughs> Might wonder what's that? It's Certified Speaking Professional it, to training the automotive industry, which today's show will be fairly directed to that industry, except this. Any show you see, I would always be looking for what does apply? What can I use? What are the keys that are creating success for Tim Marvel? So Tim, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that's good. So I really do want to know what's your story? What, how, do you, how do you get to where you're at? So how did I get to be one of 11 kids from Midwest town in Indiana to Dallas, Texas, entrepreneuring a, a technical aspect of training that uh, not being a technical guy. So I did it by way of military. I was on a submarine for four years. Uh, tried a few things in the industries, ended up in the auto industry where I've spent more than 30 years uh, training across the country for many years, consulting um, several years ago, about three years ago, three and a half years ago, I left the, the corporate side wanting to go out on my own and be a speaker, <laughs> not understanding that speaker meant a lot of different things. Because many times when we get in there and we say, I want to be a speaker, we're thinking I want to be on a platform 100% of the time. And reality is there's a lot of ways to, to deliver the same information. And I found that, that my key was the trainer breakout session person um, I was much more successful with that than I would be standing up in front of a room trying to disperse all my expertise to a group of people. Um, but it's funny how I got here. You ask how I got here. Uh, while I was still in corporate, I was about 50 years old and I said, you know, I'm going to want to retire one day and I don't want to depend on other people. So what could I do? So I devised a plan. I was going to create 100 videos a year for six years. I was going to write a book a year for six years and I had started a blog and I wanted 250,000 views on that blog. And I thought then I can be an expert because if you, my, my short brief story was I went from high school to military. So there was no college in there and I had to educate myself. I estimate that I wrote over 400,000 words, putting those items together, the books and the blogs and so on. And I actually have seven books. And um, you know where we are today with, with, with the state of everything, um, video is becoming more and more important. So to be able to create 600 videos and post them on YouTube um, really gave me that education. If you do anything 600 times, you ought to be pretty good at it, right? You'd think. You would think. Yeah. So uh, uh, about a year and a half ago, um, I started changing my thinking a little bit, still on the idea of video so important, but I wanted to do something that was advanced because everybody was taking these courses and then you do the multiple choice questions and then you go, you're certified, congratulations. And you go, what did I really learn? As a trainer, my deal was, how do I know they really learned? Where's the accountability? So in creating the tool that we created, we created a video aspect. In order for you to get certified, you have to answer the questions on the video. So you really have to be able to relate the information to what you do. Plus, we get to see whether, whether you're apathetic, apathetic, empathetic, or sympathetic. We get to see if you can use the words, tone, and body language to really express whatever it is that we're trying to get across. And you mentioned the auto industry. What I find is this is gonna cross barriers. RV industry is one, hospitality, banking, anybody that has processes. So we're real excited about it's coming together really well. Matter of fact, the websites are done, the apps are done on both iOS and, and uh, uh, Android. And we're just at a point where we're getting ready to start pushing it out in the industry and try to get some some beta stores and really get it going. So, but we're excited. It's, it's exactly where we wanted to be. That's so. beautiful. I, I, I look at that and I think, you know, 
I would tell people like you, I, I've been teaching around the country uh, as much as 200 times a year, which uh, it sounds like you were doing at least that or more. And I would always have to say, you know, raise your hand if you think, let me ask it right. Let me raise your hand if you would agree with me that I can't change you in six hours. Oh, 100%. Let me raise both hands. Six, six, I, you know what I'm saying? Is oh, that absolutely. Would, at first, and, and a lot of times I would start to say, how do I say this? You know, if you, if you would agree with me that I, I, I and I, I just want to look. Information is not power. Yeah, right. It's the application of the information that is powerful. And so, you know, what I love about what you're doing, Tim, is that you're, you're taking a longer approach. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the reality is, is that one go through doesn't change anything. Uh, we're both from the the Dallas Fort Worth area. In 2005, I worked this worked with this. Uh, I like to say in tongue in cheek, relatively unknown sales guy named Zig Ziglar. <laughs> right? Oh, he is great. Good stuff. And 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 he said, if you want to change what you are and where you are, you have to change what goes into your mind from this point. And what I love about what you're doing. And I commend you on it is that it's about that rinse and repeat to get things past the conscious mind into the unconscious mind because lasting change comes from the unconscious mind. Correct. And when I think about some of the things that you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're doing right now, how is this new technology beginning to impact your, um, uh, the, the, the people you serve? Well, because our approach, there's another side to the approach. We don't want to be a training in a box. We don't want to come in and tell you how you need to do your business. The truth is many of these auto dealerships have been in business for 20, 30, 40 years. They're second, third generation. So why should I take my 30 years and go in and tell you how you should do things? And the truth is what we do is it's, it's threefold. Basically, we come to an agreement that you want to do business with us, then we go in and we actually videotape your processes with your people in your facility. So every dealership is customized, branded to, to their store, their manufacturer, and so on. I don't want to train what I know. I know I know what I know. And I'm flexible and I understand that if I believe in it, I can do it. You know, What's it that Henry Ford said? If you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you can't. And I've seen that a million times. So if I could take your process and streamline it from onboarding all the way through the developmental training and into leadership, could I curve some of that 80% turnover you get in your sales staff? Could I curve? And what would that mean to them, right? It's, I, I mean, mean, if I somebody was able to, to actually stick around long enough to, to have been trained and developed and retained? Happier customers, happier, happier employees. You know, I hear numbers all the time when you talk about turnover, and you've probably heard numbers too, and they range anywhere from five to $10,000 a person. If you have them for 90 days or less, if you have an 80% turnover, what? I just can't imagine. It's unfathomable. I've heard the number as high as $50,000, depending on the role. Uh, so anyway, but I've heard the same number, Tim, just so you know, I've heard the same numbers. And I think about how much is somebody spending on just trying to launch somebody because they're trying to, to, to take someone who doesn't know your process mm -hmm. and send them through a four day, three day train, expect them to have a clue. And what I hear you doing is really coaching. And it's interesting that the word coaching is different from mentoring. I used to think mentoring was one thing. And somebody said, actually, coach comes from a term that's two or 300 years old, which was a, uh, it had to do with the horse and buggy coach that took you where you wanted to go. Ah, I like that. I hadn't heard that before, but I believe it. I love that. I thought that was yeah. awesome. Yeah. So what I'm hearing, tell me if I'm hearing you right, 
is that you guys actually get them at the beginning and then you keep working with them through the process, getting them to a level of proficiency where they can do their job, do it well, have a good, and, and it sounds like there's a lot of emotional intelligence in there. Am I Absolutely. reading that right? That's a hundred percent. Think about how our mind works though. If you're a manager, let's say you've worked yourself up and you're a general manager of a store. You've done that a lot on your very own instincts of going in and you've learned the process the way that you did it. And your belief is so deep that you only believe the way you did it is the very best way because that's where you found success. And what happens a lot of times is dealers will go out and they'll hire a guy to come in and he'll, he'll train, he'll, and it's very generic training. They'll train 15 people and say, Hey, you get the pick of the first five and they get to the store and they go, don't do it that way. Do it the way we do it. So what, what did you really get out of that training at that point? And we want to, we want to eliminate that because I think it's, it, it really, especially, and I don't want to start talking about millennials compared to Gen X and all that. It doesn't matter. I want you to engage with me from day one. So what if I could set the expectations when you walked in and you knew what your first 30 days was going to look like and you knew what was expected of you and you could pull it up on your app and you could walk right through it. So, you know, so we're really excited to be able to engage from day one. And, and I guess you can tell I get excited when we start talking about it. I'm, I'm really a laid back kind of quiet guy, but this is, I get really excited because nobody else is doing this. Well, and it is life. It's real life changing to the people that go through your program. Absolutely. But I'm curious, do you, do you run into resistance from the management or the ownership of the dealership because change is hard for us and they've been doing it their way. And they're like, you know what, just, you know, just stick with it and do what they need to do. <laughs> well, the, the greatest part to this is, is we're going to, we're going to map out their processes. We're going to ask them how you do business. How do you do business? What's your meet and greet? What's it sound like? Hey, hi, welcome to the dealership. My name's Tim and yours. Have you been here before? You hear anybody? These are all things that are ingrained in my brain because that was part of the process that I was brought up with. You ask three questions. There's only three things people want. Da, da, da. So, but if I take and think about this, think you own the dealership and I walk in and I say, how do you want to do business? We're going to map that out and videotape it. That's going to be your process. You own it. And the great thing is, what if they get to the point and they go, Hey, maybe my process isn't the best. Do you have any best, uh, uh, best practice ideas that you can share with me? And you open the book up and go, hey, we could, we could do this a million ways. I've been in maybe 1,500 stores in the last 25 years. We only do two things. We sell cars and we fix them. The funny thing is I couldn't go to any two stores that do business exactly the same way because it boils down to personality. So if I could map out your your process, your personality, and your your processes, and just deliver exactly what you do. See, I don't want to be, okay, I'm getting older. I don't want to keep getting on airplanes. I want to be able to deliver that. And I told you there were several steps to it. So we go in and map everything out. Then we videotape and take the still shots, put it all together. And then a couple of weeks later, we come back and we actually train the managers on delivering their process. We give them some, think about this. You become a manager and they go, hey, you know what? Today's your day, Patrick. Go in. I want you to go train the new guys. And you're going, well, we'll train them on what? Hey, just tell them what you did. Now, it's different than what I did, especially the way guys move around dealerships. So uh, consistency, efficiency, uh, I just get, there's so many things, effective training that's, your training. Well, what I love about what you're doing too is this. I know that management breeds disciples after itself. Right. It replicates itself and its people. It's going to do that whether you want it or not. That's what's going to happen. Well, what you just did is you said, how about if we speed that process up and make it more consistent? Let's, let's it, take all of the, the excuses out. There, there's no excuses. That's beautiful. So who, you know, we've talked about dealerships and such, but really identify, put a, put a square around who's your ideal client 
and that you would have the greatest impact in serving? I think any store, uh, and we'll talk about car dealerships or any business that has processes and more than 25 to 30 employees. Anybody that experiences a lot of turnover and they, they're doing, if you'll think about it, uh, we've, we've talked to some packaging companies and some other people that's called and said, hey, what is that? And we've had some conversations and it's like, if you have a group of people that do the same thing, the, the repetition over and over, and you really want to train them well, then we can help. We're actually moving forward and creating it where it's an LMS, where it actually stores, it's a, a repository of other uh, data instead of just ours and as another value benefit to the stores that we're dealing with. So we're really excited. Those any So I would say 25 employees and up, if you're repeating what you're doing in any sales industry, uh, how much of a need is there? And I'm going to ask you this for EQ or, or for that emotional quotient, you know, how much need I, is there? What's amazing is, is that, uh, you know, like you been teaching this a long time and I, I over and over again, it's like people need to understand some basics mm -hmm. around other people. I always like to start my workshops off with, you know, raise your hand if you'd agree with me that under pressure, adults act like kids in big clothing. <laughs> and then I love to ask the managers, raise your hands. No, just kidding. If you're a manager and from time to time, you feel like you run an adult daycare center where you pay people to attend. Very common. Right. And so, yeah, it's like, look, if you, if you want to shift a group, what I, I really like about what you're doing, and I encourage managers that, that have a system that you want to replicate in your people to really pay attention to this and engage to, with Tim in this, because the beauty of it is that it's not a one time, one fix, because they don't work. Right. People change two things. People change when they want to, and people change when there's enough repetition to where it gets it past the conscious mind into the unconscious mind so that they create lasting change in their life. And what your process is, I'm seeing is that it's long enough that it can literally shift. And I've seen the impact. And I'm sure you have, Tim, when you give a little bit longer mm -hmm. duration of training, not just once, but drip it in. Right. That I'm sure, do you have any case studies where you've seen where people have gone from one level of performance and productivity to another level over a time period? Yeah, you know, it, it, that's really the, <clears throat> that's really at the core of everything we do as trainers. I mean, we always go in and go, you know, what's the win for you? What, what can I measure consistently that's going to show you growth and, and so on? Um, and I, I, because of confidentiality, confidentiality, I can't throw out dealerships names and so on, but I can tell you by investing in people, the, the dealerships that really are most successful is they grasp some of these understandings of long-term engagement, long-term consistent engagement and training and development and just encouraging their people um, you can walk into a dealership many times and feel um, if there's a lot of tension with people. You know, we used to, when I started consulting, we did what we call Kodak and we'd walk through the dealership before we told them we were here and we would look for specific things. You know, was it clean and orderly when you went back to the to the sales desk where they work all the deals where it was everything thrown around or, or it was a neat and orderly and it looked like there was some control. And those are telltale signs. I mean, and yeah. it's, I don't think that'll ever change. It's people's nature. I, I know one that I've seen that, that uh, it goes right into what you're talking about. The, the, the longer term training, mentoring, coaching, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I saw one case study I saw was um, uh, in one year, the first year, you know, before they started any kind of development and training, 
they transferred about six hundred thousand dollars from say customer service to sales and closed it woo and six years later in a year they transferred six billion dollars Nice. from customer service to sales and closed it. And you go, what changed? And it was that they employed a training and development process where it was longer term. They worked with the people. They had higher retention. They had better pay. They had better results. They had all of these things shifted. And what it, it sounds like is doing exactly what you're doing and so i just go you know it's amazing now if somebody wanted to get a hold of you tim how would they do that um i mean i can throw my phone number out um you could do info at simply smart training dot net um you could reach out to me i have i have a direct email um probably the easiest one is tim marvel so it's T-I-M-M-A-R-V-E-L at gmail.com. Um, and your phone number is on the screen. <laughs> my phone number is on the screen. I'm not shy to talk to anybody. I mean, I can't, I can't even estimate how many people in the last 30 years I've talked to in the auto industry between selling cars, you know, and finance, managing stores, and then consulting and training in stores. I, so you, you can't be shy and do what we do. I agree. And I know I'll just look at his, his site up here. It's simply smart Correct. Is the, the way That's that an you get there. Site. Yeah. And good information, by the way, uh, I went through it before the show and I was really excited about that. Um, as we, as we close the show here, Tim, any um, last words about, what someone should be looking for to see if you'd even be a benefit to them? Well, I'm happy to talk to anybody. So if you, whether you're in the auto industry or not, if you're in an industry that involves sales, that's been a part of my background for 40 years. Um, if, if you're just curious, hey, what's all this onboarding conversation or, or what are you talking about customizing all the, you mean you'll bring a a crew in and actually videotape my people in my store. Absolutely. Well, we can have that conversation and clear out. And like I said, I am not worried to step outside of the auto industry because as you know, the biggest difference going from one industry to another, a lot of times is terminology. It, the brain doesn't change when you go, it's still about words, tone, and body language. It's still about uh, if you're apathetic or empathetic. I mean, those things are not, those are people traits. So just reach out to me, happy to share. I have a co-founder, I can't help, I gotta throw his name out there, Mark Harold, cause he's really the techni technical side that helped me put this all together cause it wouldn't be here if we wouldn't, didn't work together. Excellent, thank you so much, Tim. Thanks for doing the show. And, and, and folks, if you're in that industry of selling, of serving, of growing either people or your company, and you want to learn more, then reach out to Tim. Uh, I'm Pat Dewar. This is the Strength Based Marketing Podcast. Thanks for being here. And folks, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Patrick. You bet.